What's the secret to creating great looking websites? And I'll tell you one thing it isn't. It isn't AI, simply because it's just about creating JPEGs that kind of give you inspiration. But in this video, I wanna cover exactly what things you should know for the year ahead if you're just getting started, if you're in freelancing, or even if you're applying for a job or trying to get a promotion. Let's begin. The first thing is probably going to come as a no surprise, and it's being able to learn the latest trends and start using them in web design and web development. And the latest trend that is the largest is the no code trend. You might have realized that a lot of websites these days aren't built traditionally by writing everything from the ground up. Instead, what's happening is people are moving towards no code tools like Editor X, and I've been doing so myself. There's a lot of benefits to being able to go to a no code tool because what ends up happening is you save time, which saves money and essentially creates a better looking design that's easier to change in the future as well. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a background on Editor X and how I got started and how much it has changed my day to day because I personally used to build every single website from scratch on things like WordPress, and it was an absolute nightmare. Now, coming back a year or two later, I've gone through most of my websites and rebuilt them on Editor X just because it saved me so much time in updates, in maintenance, and even in security. Because when you do so, you normally have to be using the latest libraries, the latest frameworks. If it's WordPress, you have to use the latest WordPress version. And these come with security vulnerabilities. They require maintenance. They require hand manual labor to just update any particular thing, while no code tools, well, they don't require code. They're literally drag and drop half the time, which means that you can make updates right in front of a client, which makes the whole process a lot seamless. On top of that, you're saving time. Traditionally, when I used to build a website from scratch programming it, it would take me one to two weeks. Now using no code, I can build that same website in one to two days with updates only taking me seconds half the time. This is just mind blowing. From a business point of view, from a freelancing point of view, this saves you so much time that allows you to get more clients, do more sales, and just deliver better looking websites. All of this is just really the beginning. The second thing that I think is vital to being able to create a good looking website is, well, it's something that I didn't learn for a very, very long time. I've been doing web for about 10 years now. And during that 10 years, I've been mostly a programmer. And this one thing is something I was missing for so long. And once I learned it, it basically changed how I built every website in the future. It really didn't matter what programming language I was using, whether I was even using no code at all. If anything, it was more important when I was using no code. And let me tell you exactly what this was and why it was so vital. Basically, when I started building websites, they looked terrible. I didn't really know what I was doing, but what was always fundamental was the functionality. And functionality, I thought was key. As long as it works, that's all that matters. But there's a whole nother aspect to this that is important. And it's not just about how it works. What I didn't consider was design. Yes, I know this flies under the radar for a lot of people because they think they know what a good looking website looks like. They can pick between good colors and bad colors and they think they understand, but really when it comes down to your turn to actually do this yourself, then it's actually quite hard to find good color harmony, to understand topography and much more. And this is something I didn't understand for the longest period. It took me five years to gain these skills. And during that time, I actually found out there were fundamental rules to picking good colors, analogous colors, complementary colors. I found out that these sorts of rules, they never change. So once I learned them one time, I could use them for the rest of my life, which was amazing. Now I could always build good looking websites. And I was kind of knocking myself in the head as to why I didn't learn this sooner. Understanding design meant so much more than just creating a good looking website. Now, if I was applying for a job, I could showcase my portfolio and it would stand out from the crowd because it would look good. If I was doing freelancing, I could charge more money because my websites look better than others. My whole career essentially changed and I'm really proud of it. If you actually want to learn design, then I've spent the last year or two putting together a book called Teach Me Design. It's these 
fundamental principles, color theory, topography, UI, UX, design processes, and so much more. It's got a light version and a dark version. It has video tutorials. It's all these fundamentals. And once you learn it, you'll always be able to use it for everything from websites to even PowerPoint presentations. For the third thing, for building good looking websites, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story as to how I figured this out. So I was a bit of a freelancer when I started out developing websites. And for the most part, I thought I was the best. And yes, I, I wasn't, but it doesn't matter. I thought I was. And so it really didn't matter for me to ever get a second opinion. I would build a website and I would take it straight to a client. And for the most part, the client would just say, yeah, that's, that's good, um, great. And I wouldn't get much feedback per se. Now, I think this is because clients normally don't want you to charge more money for design changes or anything like that. So it wasn't until I got my first job that I got to know a friend of mine. And this friend decided that he would start designing websites with me. And this was the best thing ever because from that point in time, he would always critique my designs and I would critique his designs. This led for an overall improvement in both our work because he considered things I never did. And so did I, I would point out things that he didn't consider. This is where I think the tip of creating design reviews or even having someone to criticize your work and taking that feedback and implementing it is one of those things that a lot of people don't even consider to do. Sometimes we don't have the time for it. Sometimes we believe in our work so much that we don't even think to do it. But since I have, I implement design reviews for everything I do from the thumbnails I create to the videos I create to even the websites that I design. And if you're like me from a few years ago and you just don't have anyone to send the designs to review, feel free to jump into my Discord. I've got a huge community in there and I've got a channel dedicated to web design reviews. I can jump on there and review it myself even and there'll be lots of other people that'll give tips too. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you like this format, if you have any topics you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. I'm still putting in together a massive crash course, which will be hours long on how to use AI art, mid-journey, chat GPT, no code, editor X to build websites. But for the meantime, there is a no coding crash course up here and a mid-journey video up here. I'll see you in the next one.